the birth of a steel colossus. In March 1942, German engineers were handed an audacious task to design a tank that would outclass every armored vehicle ever conceived. Ferdinand Porsche took up the challenge, sketching plans for a war machine weighing 100 tons, something the world had never seen. By June, Adolf Hitler reviewed the concept and with his characteristic enthusiasm for superweapons gave it his personal approval. What began as a behemoth named Mammoth, meaning mammoth, soon transitioned to motion, meaning little mouse, before finally settling on the name mouse. In early 1943, the irony of its name could not mask its formidable presence. The mouse was envisioned as a tank that could deliver devastating firepower while shrugging off any enemy attack. Its primary weapon was a 128mm KWK 44 L55 gun, engineered by Krupp, capable of destroying any Allied armored vehicle from over three and a half kilometers away. A secondary coaxial 75mm gun provided additional support, making the Maus a fortress on treads. The tank's ambition was as heavy as its projected weight. The initial wooden model, shown to Hitler in May 1943, revealed a design that had already grown far beyond the original 100-ton target. By then, its projected weight had reached a staggering 188 tons. Hitler, captivated by its sheer scale and potential, approved it for mass production, ordering an initial series of 150 tanks. The mouse was not just a weapon, it was a symbol of Germany's industrial might and ambition. Engineering a mechanical giant. The mouse was more than a tank. It was a feat of engineering that pushed the limits of technology and design. At its core was an innovative electric transmission system, an idea Porsche had previously employed in other designs. This system used an internal combustion engine to power an electric generator, which then drove electric motors connected to the tracks. The initial engine, the Daimler-Benz MB509 gasoline engine, was adapted from an aircraft engine and later replaced by the Daimler-Benz MB517 diesel engine for improved efficiency. The tank's tracks were over one meter wide and were driven by electric motors mounted inside the hull. Each track had a suspension system that included 24 road wheels per side, divided into six bogey sets, which spread the immense weight evenly across the ground. This design allowed the mouse to move, albeit slowly, with a maximum speed of 22 kilometers per hour on hard surfaces. The mouse was built with thick armor to withstand almost any attack. The front of the hull had 220 millimeters of armor, while the sides and rear were protected by up to 190 millimeters. The turret was even more heavily armored, with the front reaching 240 millimeters of thickness. This made the mouse virtually impervious to all contemporary weapons, solidifying its role as a mobile fortress. 3. Trials of a Titan By late 1944, the first two prototypes of the mouse were ready for testing. These trials revealed the immense challenges of operating such a massive vehicle. Its weight prevented it from using most bridges, limiting its mobility. To address this, the mouse was designed to ford rivers up to two meters deep or submerge entirely to a depth of eight meters while using a snorkel to provide air to the crew. The mouse's massive size and weight made it difficult to maneuver and vulnerable to mechanical failures. During field testing, its maximum achievable speed was just 13 kilometers per hour under normal conditions, though modifications allowed it to reach 22 kilometers per hour in ideal circumstances. Despite its limited speed, its firepower and armor made it a formidable opponent. The mouse project began with ambitious production goals. The first prototype was to be completed by mid-1943, with production ramping up to 10 tanks per month. Krupp was responsible for the chassis, armament, and turret, while Alcat handled final assembly. However, as the war turned against Germany, the project faced delays and resource shortages. By the time the prototypes were completed, only one turret had been mounted on a hull. The other prototype remained unfinished, and the tank never saw combat. The Mauser's final design included additional defensive features, such as a roof-mounted weapon for close-quarters defense, a coaxial machine gun with a thousand rounds, and ports for submachine guns. Plans for future upgrades included an anti-aircraft cannon, but these were never realized. Top 5. A Legacy of Immensity 
Although the mouse never entered mass production or saw active combat, its sheer size and advanced design left a lasting impression. Today, it remains the heaviest fully enclosed armored fighting vehicle ever built. The surviving prototype, captured by Soviet forces in 1945, serves as a reminder of Germany's ambition to build the ultimate war machine. The mouse was both a technological marvel and a symbol of the challenges of excessive ambition. It demonstrated the limits of engineering under wartime conditions and the difficulty of balancing innovation with practicality. While it failed to change the course of the war, the Mao's remains an iconic example of the extremes of military engineering.